Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host as always, Captain Ron, and with me is my good friend Paul Stanley from Demcota Ranch Beef. Hi Paul. How you doing? Good man, how you doing? Good to see you, Captain. Paul is here and he's gonna show us something really cool that's been going on on the, on the internet. What's that called? This is a revolver ribeye. In this episode, we'll learn the art of crafting a bone ladder. Yes, you heard right, a bone ladder. Watch as Paul ties up this beefy beauty like he's rigging a ship. Season it with our special black as gunpowder Fogo rub. Cook it low and slow, then sear it for that golden crust. Stay until the end for a special tip to add even more flavor to your steak. And don't forget to check out the full recipe in the video description. So step one is you've got to select your prime rib. Okay. So you need a good, high quality ribeye. Okay. Uh, of course, we found Demcota Ranch Beef. <sighs> How bizarre. You work for Demcota and we're using a Demcota Ranch Wow. Th this is it. So uh, this is a upper two thirds choice Angus uh, ribeye. Okay. And this is what is called a lip on. Okay. So meaning, meaning what? What does the lip on me mean? Meaning the, the lip of fat is still connected to it. So ah, okay. it's not a ribeye roll okay. and it's not a, a bone-in ribeye. Gotcha. So the bones have been removed as well. Okay. Um, nice tight cryovac on this one. So you can still see like where the bones were removed here. Yep, you That's can see cool. some indentions okay. and uh, good eating meat right there. Excellent. Nice and flavorful. So we'll take this thing out, get it dried off and get it fabricated and ready to go. All right, very good. So we got this giant ribeye roll. Now here's my question, okay? You said we're gonna cook this on the Minimax. This is not going to fit on the Minimax. Are we going to use this whole thing? I, I thought you had several Minimaxes. <laughs> I only have one uh, Minimax. Oh. We've got plenty of eggs we uh. can cook this on, but you know. <laughs> no, we uh, Minimax can create big flavor. Okay. So we are going to cut this down to the length of our marrow bones. Ah, so that is what okay. is going to be the guide. So we're basically going to use this as a guide, cut this to the length, and then we'll have this whole extra piece left over, right? Well, what are we going to do with the leftovers? I don't know, you just go home and I'll worry about the leftovers, okay, it's okay. You, you, you could feed the photographer. Yes, well, we have to do that. Yeah. All right, here, I'm gonna hand you the tools here. So you're gonna show us what to do here. Now we're gonna start with the fat cap on top. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna take a little, any of this connective tissue on the top, any of this excess fat, um, if, if uh, you don't wanna eat it, take it off. Okay, especially the hard stuff that's not really gonna yep. render down very well, right? And any of the silver skin. Yeah, so. easy with that thing there. Hey, whoa, easy now. Don't lose a finger. Yeah. So, and there's not a, uh, there's, this one's trimmed pretty tight. So yeah. there's not a lot to take off. Here. I like that you can kind of stick your thumb in there and kind of almost peel it away, huh? You can, you can yeah. really just grab it, yeah. pull there. If it needs a little bit of knife help, just but help not much, okay. not much. I got gotcha. you. Pull that, we'll take that off. So we want to leave a little fat cap on there. Is that right? We are because uh, we, we talked about retaining moisture earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So fat retains moisture sure. as well, and it will render down to where you can chew through it. Silver skin, completely different story. That yeah. will not render will down. Be, right. Excellent, uh, so that looks pretty good here. Now how about the lip? What are we gonna do here? So with the lip, we're gonna take it off. We're gonna look at the ends. And one more thing we're gonna check before we do that though, is let's look on the bottom. Uh, every once in a while, you know, you wanna check some of these rib fingers okay. here. Uh, there can be sometimes a little piece of bone uh, you know, on this, you want to just check it over. So when you talk about the rib fingers, you're talking about the sections where they, they cut out the rib bones from there? Yeah, this is wonderfully tender meat right here. Okay. Yeah, this is beautiful. You know, one thing I've noticed is that I use your meats in a lot of egg fest, as you know, but they may not know. I use it in a lot of egg fest and things like that. So I used to use, let's just say a big box store, prime beefs, you know? Since I started using your choice, I find your choice actually to be of the same quality or even better sometimes than the big box store um, prime, so that's kind of right. cool. And, yeah. uh, well, we know where our cattle are coming from. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they they don't. Yep. I got gotcha. you. All right. So. so I guess we need to open up some bones. Yeah, we're gonna open up some bones and we we'll take this lip off first. So I'm gonna look at the end here. Okay. And where this eye ends, I'm gonna take the lip off right here. So, so you see it. that? We got the eye okay. right here. That's where it ends. So I'm gonna cut from here straight across to the other side. I'll open the bones, you do that. Gotcha. I'll do it without cutting myself too. Okay. Here, can you use that? Uh, got, oh, oh, look at you. I got a slightly larger. Dang, I don't wanna mess with you, man. <laughs> Damn, have knife will travel, jeez. So I noticed too that these are not frozen. They are nice and rubbery. The, the, yeah. They are, those Those are thawed out a little bit. Now, you could use frozen marrow bones. They 
they thawed extremely quickly. Okay. So, so for those who don't know what a what a marrow bone is, can we kind of clue folks in on what a marrow yeah. bone is? So this is the femur bone of a cow. Ah. This okay. is the this is the big one. Of course, okay. there's four per animal. Gotcha. Uh, but this is a center cut. Uh -huh. So this has been the ball joints have been cut off. You're left with the center cut there, and then cut lengthways. It's called a canoe bone. A canoe bone. Wow. So I they can... can shrink us down, jump in there, get in a river, start. Start they can paddling. call it a canoe bone yeah. or or a kayak bone. <laughs> sorry, good. folks. I'm sorry. Good. It never ends. Okay, so, so you got the entire lip cut off here. Yes. Yeah, so, so we just throw it out in the garbage? Um, no. Do you got pets? We're not throwing this in the garbage. <laughs> All right, Paul. Now we got our bones out of the package here. We got the fat cap off here. We got the lip off of here. What's next? All right, so we got a little bit of an angle right yeah. here, which is normal. Mm -hmm. So we're going to square that up and we're going to use this end. So just right cut there. that even. So we're, just gonna, go. so we're just basically squaring off the end so it's not on an angle so that the bones will actually kind of all go around it perfectly. Is that right? It is. And you know what cut that's called? I don't know. That's the captain's cut. The captain's cut? Is that really called that? No, it's not. It's called that today, baby. It is. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that beautiful marbling. God, that's gorgeous. Oh, Look yeah. at this in here. Amazing. All right. So all right. we use our bones for measuring, right? Okay, so then we, we want a little excess. A little excess. You so want it to hang over the edge of the bones a little bit. There you go, because it's okay. going to shrink up just a little bit. Like a quarter inch on both sides, something like quarter that. Quarter to half inch on each side will be be yeah. nice. About there. There you go, sir. I'm just so happy he's letting me do some of the work here. Right. This is pretty cool. Thank you, thank you for allowing me to do this. You're most welcome. But before we go too far, hey, thank you seriously for coming and doing this with us. This is pretty awesome. I've been wanting to do this, and I've never done it. I've seen you do it a bunch of times. Yeah. But I've never seen it. Look at that. Okay, folks, should we go through the different parts of the ribeye? Let's do it. All right. This? This is the eye of the ribeye. Okay. This is... I know, I know, I know. What is it? What spinalis is it? dorsi. There you go. Huh? Huh? Pretty cool, right? This rib cap meat, spinalis, the tastiest meat, in my opinion, on an entire animal. Yeah. So right. what we may do with that other piece there, I may show them how to take, a, take that cap off of there and make cap steaks out of it, actually. Am I going to have to do the work? No. Okay. I wouldn't want to have to put you to do too much work, Paul. Yeah. But that's beautiful. Gorgeous eye on this one. Beautiful spinalis. When you're shopping for steaks in your stores, this is what you look for. A beautiful eye and a nice thick spinalis. This is the tastiest part of the ribeye and the most tender part. So we are off to a very good start here, sir. There we go. All right. Now, now what? Now tying, tying bones is going to be the next part. Okay. And that is not smooth. I got the kitchen twine. There we go. All right. Stop it. Get All right. More, more. So, All right. So what do we do here? Uh, we're going to guesstimate uh, that we've got six to seven. We're going to start out here with six bones. Okay. If that's not enough, then we'll switch to seven. Okay. So, so we're going to start off with one big, long piece of string, about a six foot length of string. There we go. And okay. we're just going to tie. We'll move this guy right here. We're going to tie one to start with. We're okay. going to make we're going to make a bone ladder. All right. So start mm -hmm. out. A bone ladder, no A less. bone ladder. Cool. So okay. there you go. And then it's pretty important when move your knot so when you're cinching it later, you're not right. losing some space. You're correct? not losing space. You're not losing space. Sorry, I'm all tongue tied. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not uh, just me. Everybody's got dad jokes around. Always, here. <laughs> always. They they make life fun. Yep. Now I notice the bones have like a, a thicker end on them and a thinner end on them. You try and put the same side to each each one or good observation, Captain. Thank you, sir. Uh, so yes, we're gonna alternate. So we're gonna put ah. this uh, this larger uh, fluted end on this side okay. and then alternate it with the smaller here. We'll go back and forth to get a more uniform bone ladder. So what we're talking here is you can see how the bone spreads and is wider at this end, and then on this one is the other way. So we're gonna alternate them back and forth. When is the first time you, you t had one of these? Uh, you know, I don't know, I saw it a lot there. I think the first time I actually tasted it was when you and, uh, when you and C. Mac Cooks did one at Memphis in May. Okay. I think that might have been the, the first gotcha. time. Gotcha. That was, that, that was a great, uh, great show up there. Alternate. Yes, that was. That was definitely a great show. So then I'm just going to tie this one like you did the other one. Yep. There, there you go. And we're just keeping them, um, you know, quarter to half inch space from each other. A little bit of space in between. Yep. Them. You'll see when we go to wrap them around that. Uh, 
I wasn't sure if like we stand it up and then just hold the bones like this and then tie it. I, I was kind of wondering how you do this. I was, this, I was, this will definitely make it uh, a lot easier. Okay. Uh, you're not sitting here fighting trying to hold one bone here and wrap a string around it. I, I've also seen people just put them on there and just wrap string around it. Yeah. Then they kind of fall apart, and, and it doesn't it take doesn't very look long. Very good. No. Yeah, it doesn't take very long to do this. It's not. It's not bone ladder, folks. Bone ladder. Bone ladder. You know, maybe, maybe uh, you turn this into some kind of necklace for that special person in your life. Wow. I don't know how well that would go over. Well, then you, you hang around with the wrong people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure your knots are ship shaped, Captain. Oh. It would not be good if I didn't. It would not. Paul, you realize that laughing only encourages me, right? A hundred percent. But in this case, you're not upriver without a canoe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see what you did there. Does that look right? How'd I do? Perfect. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to tie, I'm going to get two more lengths of string ready oh, to man. increase the tension when we need it. Just use a little more, Paul. We could tell who didn't buy the string themselves. Jeez. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, while I'm tying a, a loop in this for yeah. here in a minute, mm -hmm. it's time to season the ribeye. Yeah. All right. Woohoo! Now we're gonna do something a little different. Um, I know you normally go a lot of salt and pepper with this here. We're gonna use our Fogo rub. It's it's you know it's a gun thing, so it's gonna be black like a, like go. the barrel of a gun. Okay. Like, so that sound pretty cool. It's like a gunpowder rub. It is something uh -huh. like that. So it's actually made with activated charcoal in it. And I don't know if you if you're familiar, but activated charcoal is what they give you if you ingest some like some bad food or something like that. They're gonna give you that to actually soak up the poisons in your system. So everybody says, "Oh, it's black. It's got charcoal in it. Can you eat that? Heck yeah, you can eat that." Now, is this a very salty rub? No, it's not a very salty rub. I mean, it has salt in it, of course. You know, I mean, any beef rub worth its weight is going to have some salt in it. But um, you know, it's it's it's. So that's why it's you're got, going heavy. It's got salt in it. Okay, it's got quite a bit. It is actually the first ingredient, but it's not. It's going to sound funny because it is the first ingredient, but it's not what makes up the rub mostly. You know what I mean? There's yeah. a lot more flavors in this rub. I've used some other rubs that are activated charcoal rubs, and I, I tell you what, to me, you just can't compare. You really just can't compare. Well, I've tasted this rub when you've roasted some of our strip loins yeah. at some events, and yeah. it is delicious. I mean, we've won more egg fat. I used to make all fancy food and, and do like a, a pork slider with, a, you know, pickled onions and pimento cheese and do all this kind of stuff. We started serving this, uh, actually, them coated New York strips, coated in our Fogo rub, and that's it. A slice of steak off the cutting board, and boom, we started winning all these egg fests with that. So it, it's just, it tells you how actually great the real flavor of this is. So I coated it on all sides, Paul. I hope that that's what I was supposed to do. Absolutely. All right, good. All right, so let's place it on the center. Okay, just like that, like uh, outside edge like that, placed on the center, okay. Um, now I did, one of the first ones I did of this, I seasoned the bones separate from the ribeye. There's okay. no difference in flavor okay. that I found out. I've done a couple different ways. So same seasoning, put those bones on there. Now that you got that, close to being together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip, just made a little... Now, do you tie these little, two bones together or you tie the... Oh, I got you. Yeah, so I got a little loop here. I'm going to slip this over the end on this side. Okay. Pull it tight. There we go. And then have you stand that up on its top. There as, we go. As such. As such. Okay. And I'm going to go around this one. Okay. And then... To give you a little bit more leverage, I'm going to actually hook this on the inside of the bone. Ah, look at you! Okay, tricky. So squeeze it together. Okay. Get that. Use that. Use the sharp edges on that bone. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So Good. we I just like put it. the loose in, pulled it down, and there we go. Then cool. I'm going to, to do the same thing for the bottom side. We are, but that's going to be where we cinch it pretty tight. Sounds like a cinch to me. There, there we go. It'll be ship shape, Captain. Hey <laughs> so, <laughs> aye, aye, Paul Stanley. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie this off so it'll hold nicely here. Great. And there you go. So the top is nice and secure. Do we cut off this extra? Let's go ahead and cut off that extra. So what you want to do is you want to cut up towards your arm, right? It's uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean. You've uh, been listening to The Cure a lot, yeah. feeling kind of down? No, no, no. <laughs> Let's not even get that rumor started, no. Uh, 
Oh, you got it already. Look at there we go. Right. Got another loop ready to go. Now this is where we can really put some some pressure, some torque on it. Okay. You know, so we're gonna pull that one and oh, break it. Oh man, you are not kidding about the torque. We can torque about how hard you pulled that. All right, this is our non-tied top, so still gonna go tight. All right, so you're go going tight. around there. You're pulling it real tight. Yeah. You want to pull it nice real and good. tight. Close in any of those little gaps. You want to make sure that that marrow is pressed right up against that meat. So as it cooks, the, as the marrow melts, so to speak, you want to ju basting that meat, basically. Correct. And ribeye is going to shrink. Ah, okay. So you don't want to pull Makes this sense. out and then it just kind of falls a, everywhere. You have, you have meat in one hand and a, and a bone ladder in the other hand. Gotcha. And yeah. you promised your friend something cool to show him. Yeah. And, and you have nothing. Yes, so. them being my friend. Yeah. So there you go. Just popped it behind okay. bone corner. Come back, find a, Just give a spot. Tie off there. Yeah, a little tie off there. Now with this tie off, we do something a tad different. Oh boy! So we have a a, a bigger amount of string here. Okay. So we're gonna tie off there, and then we're gonna pop this over to the other side. I know what you're gonna do. Yep. I've seen this part. You have the purse handle. This is the purse handle. We're gonna pop this this section over. Okay. Keep a little handle there, and tie that off there. So imagine you're doing a big party. You've got more friends than Captain Ron does, which means you have two. So say you're prepping, I don't know, ten of these. May need to carry them somewhere. All right, Paul. So we've got our little uh, got a little handle here, our little purse strings for our for our revolver ribeye. Ready to go. Now again, in case you weren't sure before, why we explained it, the reason they call it a revolver ribeye because this makes it resemble the the barrel of a gun, not the barrel of a gun, but actually the the revolver part of the gun that's going to rotate where the bullets go into. So <laughs> that's what that looks like. So I think there's only one thing left to do now. Let's light up the grill. Let's get this thing cooking. What do you think? Absolutely. All right. Let's, let's light it. Let me grab some charcoal. All right. All right, so we're gonna do something a little different today, Paul. I know you were expecting us to use some lump charcoal. Well, we're yep. going to use our new briquettes, all right? These are yeah. available only in Ace Hardware, so you can only get them in Ace, they're an Ace okay. Hardware exclusive, but it's really cool because the normal thing has been, what, what do they say about using briquettes in the Big Green Egg? Well, you don't do don't it. Don't do it, right, exactly. The nice part about these is that they're all natural, okay? They're made from okay. coconut husks. They have all natural binders, um, vegetable starches as a binder. So it's gonna really hold together. The nice part is, is it burns really clean, doesn't create a lot of ash, and there's no lighter fluid. One of the main reasons they tell you not to use briquettes is a lot of them have that self-lighter fluid in it, and you have to use lighter fluid. Never use lighter fluid in egg, okay? So the beautiful part about our briquettes is that they don't have to. We've already loaded this thing up with charcoal here, so we will grab a couple starters, put them in here, and get this baby lit up. Hey, now Paul just went inside to uh, put the ribeye into the refrigerator, wrap it up and put it in the refrigerator. So we're going to track our temperatures. We're going to cook this at 250 degrees today to about 120 degrees internal. The best thing we can use is our meter plus thermometer. What we're going to do is there's a little line on here, shows you where to insert it to. We're going to go right in the center of the meat and just insert it right to that line. Meter measures at the tip of the thermometer, so wherever that tip is of the meter, that's where you're going to get your temperature reading. So we're going to put that right in the center of our meat, and this is just about up to temperature, so we're getting ready to put it on. I'm so excited. Revolver ribeye. Woo! All right, Paul Stanley. Well, it looks like we're at about 250 degrees here, so I think it's time that we put it on. All right, so we're going to put this just right on here. We're going to make sure that it's not being, cut, you know, on the outside where the heat comes up around the edges. We want it right over the convector. So. I think that's all we have to do, right? Good clearance space here. I was going to ask, has the meter got clearance? Yeah. Meter got clearance. Good seal. Temp coming up. Airplanes flying go. over. Revolver <laughs> ribeye on the Minimax. You got that nice blue smoke. So you'll notice, OK, even though it's briquettes, we still got that beautiful blue smoke rolling out of the top here. So it's exactly what we want. We did not add wood. We don't want a real smoky flavor on this, right? No, don't want to get too many flavors competing with uh, with our taste buds. Right. We want that natural Demkota Ranch beef shine through and let that Fogo rub go. do its job, right? Let's let it do its job. After we seasoned it and we lit this, that sat there for about a half an hour with that seasoning on there. So through osmosis, the moisture kind of came out a little bit, grab some of that seasoning, it's going to pull it inside. So on a prime rib, one of the complaints that we get sometimes is that the inside is not too flavorful. Well, that's going to kind of help with that. You let that sit with the seasoning on it, it's going to soak in there and you're going to get flavor all through the piece of meat. And when we finish this thing, you've got a trick in what you do with prime rib. I do. So looking forward to seeing that. Shh, don't tell. <laughs> all right, let's get a cook. We'll be right back. 
just so you all know, okay, we're not averse to it either. We get into talking while we're in between shooting. We got a little over. So reading 122 now on this thing, okay? Internal temperature. What, what's our next step? Time to take it off. Time to take it off? All right. Well, let's see here. I happen to have a glove on. Oh, look at that. Is that gorgeous looking or what? Yeah, and the smell is unbelievable, dude. Oh, my God. All right, I'm just going to pick it up. Look at that. Is that beautiful or what? Beautiful that is, golden brown. You can see where the, the marrow yep. is separated from it. Wow, that is amazing looking, man. So, Absolutely amazing. See, our, our shrinkage yeah, was perfect. I do. So that little bit of overlap came right down to the length of the bone. Shrinkage. So, shrinkage. It was in the pool. <laughs> it's cold. All right. Now, so I guess, I mean, my experience tells me we're going to let this rest now, right? Absolutely. Okay. About 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes, let it rest. Should we let them know what our little secret's going to be? Absolutely. All right. So normally now he would slice this and we would serve it just like this. Not us. We're going to go direct on here. We're going to give it a good sear. We're going to hit the inside of it with a little more seasoning and give it a good sear. This way we're eating absolute Maillard reaction food. Why don't you tell them what the Maillard reaction is, Paul? Yeah, so that is caramelization of the outside surface of the meat. So let's switch this over to direct. All right, Paul. So while this thing is resting and while the heat is, coals are heating up, is there anything else that we need to do to this thing? Well, to let it rest, we need to get those bones off of it. Take them off now? Take them off now. We want that marrow to cool down a little bit because we're going to use it. I don't want to cut all your beautiful string handiwork that you did here, man. It is a work of art. You are like Betsy Ross of the steak world, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. That's just awesome. It's nice and gelatinous. It's, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I love this, man. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> and it really sticks to it so nicely. Yeah. Man, oh, man. That's that extra cinching with a string that snapped it. There you go, folks. There's your ribeye. Are yeah. we, is it time to cut it? Time, time to, to carve it? it? All right, here we go. Look at that edge-to-edge, coast-to-coast paint. That's exactly what we're looking for. Did someone say juicy? That's what happens when you rest your steak before slicing. Now, let's finish these beauties off with a little more Fogo Rub and sear them for about one minute per side for a gorgeous golden crust. All right, Paul. This is looking beautiful. Now, this is your baby, so I'm going to give you the honors of slicing the steak. Why, thank okay. you very much. Why, you are very welcome. Across the grain. i got to teach you meat guys everything, you know? <laughs> is that just amazing? It's got the beautiful crust on it. Got that gorgeous edge-to-edge, coast-to-coast pink. It's just absolutely beautiful, and it's just dripping. There's only one thing left to do, Paul. Let's Cheers. Do it. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Cheers to you folks. Mm. Shut the front door. That doesn't suck at all. Not even a little bit. Yeah. Not even joke. I can't even. I can't even jokingly say that that's no good. That's delicious. That's delicious. It's tender. I mean, the seasoning <laughs> was outstanding. I, I really, truly believe that the bone marrow makes a difference yeah. when you cook it. I, it I kind of thought maybe it was a little high. It looks just looks cool. No, I think it really did something to yeah. it. And I, I like your signature touch with the extra sear at the sear. end. Yeah. Yeah, it can't be beat. And you know what's nice about that? You just do it a minute per side, and it's still going to be edge to edge, coast to coast pink like that. Paul, this is a winner. The revolver ribeye, the yeah, Gatling gun, you know what? Good. You can call it whatever the hell you want to call it. I'll take it all day long, man. It's so good. Just call me when you're cooking one. All right, I, I want to come eat it. I will. Guys, Demkota Ranch Beef, okay, there's going to be a link down below to Fairway Packaging where you can order their beef directly from them. Tell them you want Demkota Ranch Beef when you contact Fairway, okay? Paul, this was absolutely fantastic. Do you have anything that you'd like to add to the nice folks out there? No. Thank you guys for watching, using Demkota Ranch Beef, Fogo Charcoal, and cook it on a big green egg. Man, oh man, no kidding. I'm going to cut myself a little piece of the, uh, the spinalis here for, for when we're done. But guys... If you like what you saw here, remember to subscribe to our channel. Join the Fogo family. We want to hit 100,000 before the end of the year, okay? So hit that subscribe button. Give us a like. Give us a thumbs up. You know you want to. Even if you don't want to, do it anyway, right? Absolutely. What are you doing over there? I don't trust this guy. Remember to get out and grill, and we'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life. Captain Ron and Paul Stanley, out.